All right, joining me here on the program is the president of TKO MMA, who uh, their event comes back and makes a return at TKO MMA 36 on Friday, November 4th, 2016. Please welcome Stefan Patrick to the show for the very first time. Stefan, thank you very much for joining me. How's it going? Uh, today's been a, pre- a pretty good day, so I'm doing very good. <laughs> I'm sure busy. Uh, it was crazy busy. Um but it was a great day. I think it was the biggest day in TKO history, even though it hasn't been uh, alive for the past uh, eight years. But today was still the greatest day in the history of the company, which was we announced. And uh, and obviously, there's a huge buzz in the country, huge buzz in town. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. Yes, very much so. Um, I agree with you on that point. Um, you were teasing some good news a month or so back, so I gotta imagine this has been in the works for for quite a while. How long has that actually been in the works? The return of TKO. Um, I would say a couple of weeks. Uh, when I started talking about it was right around the um, International Fight Week in Vegas. Uh, I was there. Uh, for, obviously, I had Kevin Lee fighting on, on July eighth. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, discussions, uh, became very, uh, serious there. And, uh, you know, we've been, uh, talking about it, negotiating, uh, uh, ever s- since that, that weekend. And, uh, today, uh, we announced, uh, the result of, uh, those negotiations, those discussions. But, you know, like I said at the press conference, uh, the reason TKO is back is because of uh, my good friends at UFC. We've always had a great relationship ever since uh, Fertitas bought the company back in 2000 or 2001. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great day for Canadian MMA. It's a great day for the fighters here. Um, you know, we, we haven't seen uh, as many Canadian talent uh, of high caliber go to the UFC uh, compared to the, the type of uh, the quality of fighters that were going to the UFC back at, when TKO was there, so we're going to resume that and uh, make sure we we build the uh, the next GSP and the next uh, Patrick Cote and the the top stars from Canada. Yes, for sure. This seems like something that would have taken months and months, but you got this kind of locked down within a month or so. How how did this come along so quickly? Because you, like you mentioned, uh, it, it was still fairly brief negotiations only back at GFC 200 weekend. Um, well, you know, uh, I mean, I've been in contact with these these guys for a long time regarding TKO because, uh, you know, they, they, they purchased the, uh, the library of uh, previous events uh, back in 2015. So uh, there was always a line of communication. Uh, but like I said, the, the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, it, it did it, uh, intensify, and uh, it led to uh, us uh, agreeing on a, on a great deal for Canadian fighters and uh, Canadian fans. Now, I'm sure there's many reasons why you're bringing TKO MMA back, um, but if you have to pick up one, what, what's the biggest reason you are bringing TKO back? Is it the fact that you're just simply getting the itch to promote a fight card again? Is it that you want to improve the MMA scene up here in Canada? What, what's the major reason you're bringing back TKO? Well, obviously, the itch was there, you know, because that's what I do best, and, uh, I, you know, I... Ever since I stopped promoting, I always wanted to uh, uh, to bring back a promotion to to the top, you know, to the top of the mountain in the country, uh, which is where TKO was uh, from 2000 to 2008. Uh, you know, uh, obviously this opportunity came, and uh, it was a, you know, obviously even though you get the itch, you need to find the the best opportunity, and I think this is the by far the the the, the the biggest opportunity for for us and for for the fighters and uh, you know it's uh, the scene is kind of uh, I wouldn't say dead because that's a big word but the the, the the scene is very slow in Canada right now um, I mean I, there's a lot there's a lot of talent on the East Coast Ontario and Quebec specifically uh, that can't they, they, they're not able to get fights out west. Because, you know, those promoters bring fighters. I mean, if there's a super talent from Toronto or from Montreal, you won't be able to fight in Calgary or Edmonton or Vancouver because these guys won't bring this guy that can beat, beat their guy. And, that, and, that, and that's always been a big problem in the country. Promoters try to build their guys 
by giving them, you know, uh, tomato cans. But that's something TKO never did, you know, in this 10 year of existence. And, you know, basically the, in the country, there was only two guys not doing that. It, me and Mark Pavlich with the MFC, we were the only ones, you know, bringing top guys for, for, for our fighters to improve. Uh, and some of our guys lost fights because they, uh, we were bringing top top competition. But it, 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 that's how we did, we we built guys like Saint Pierre, Cote, Loiseau, Armenix, Stout, Goulet, and all these guys. And he did the same thing with uh, Rangimo, J- Jason McDonald, uh, and all the guys that came out of, of the MFC. So I I think the way to build this is is not about you know protecting fighters. It's about giving the fans the best show in the country. And uh, that's what we delivered for almost 10 years, and that's what we will deliver for another 10 years. And how long have you had this issue talking about to promote another card? Has it been only the past month or so? Has it been years? How long have you had this itch to uh, to to uh, bring back TKO and pr- and promote another fight card? Well, well, to bring back TKO is kind of new. It's something like I said that's just you know it's we're talking about weeks or months but uh the itch has been there for a while as you know i've been working very uh, i worked very hard on uh, on getting thai boxing legalized in, in quebec and it's something that I, I was i was able to do but then at the last minute the government uh, kind of screwed me so you know that I, I i pretty much left like four years of hard work in this uh, s1 adventure so obviously, when, when that happened, I was kind of, I wouldn't say depressed, but I was kind of very bummed about it. And uh, But the itch was still there. I mean, you don't work four years on a project if you don't, you don't have a huge itch, and uh, you know, and if you don't really want it. So, uh, but then, you know, the, this opportunity came about, and uh, I think uh, I'm happy that you know, uh, I, I was patient, because this, this honestly is the the biggest opportunity in Canadian history uh, and in TK history. Now, you mentioned that you've had this itch a bit longer than you really thought about bringing back TKO. Um, did you ever consider starting up a new MMA organization and not bringing back TKO, but instead starting up an, a new one? Well, <clears throat> uh, the market is so, you know, like, then again, I don't know which word to use, is so slow right now in in in, in Canada and Quebec. Uh, I mean, Ontario, everywhere in the country, it's very slow. So starting an MMA, an MMA promotion from scratch uh, under normal circum- circumstances is a big risk and uh, is something that I wasn't really willing to do. But with this deal uh, and with this brand, uh, it's not a risk anymore. It's a uh, it's a guaranteed winner. And because uh, keep in mind, when I stopped TKO at TKO 35, the last show at the Bell Center, there was 7,000 people there. Uh, I mean, TKO. I didn't stop TKO because it wasn't uh, it wasn't working or it wasn't successful. It was huge. It was immensely successful. But you know. Um, uh, now you know bringing back TKO with the kind of deal we have is a is, uh, is is a perfect circumstance. It's a perfect uh, scenario, and uh, we're, we're we're very happy about it. Now you mentioned uh, a few times there that this is the biggest opportunity for TKO MMA. Now I don't disagree with you one bit, but what makes this the biggest opportunity? Is it purely the fight pass deal? Is it something else? Well, the, 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 like I said, the, the reason I'm bringing back, bringing back TKO today, or we're announcing that today, is because of the, the, the UFC Fight Pass deal. This is this is uh, the, the I would say this is the art of the deal. I mean, uh, you have to keep in mind that UFC Fight Pass is the biggest digital streaming platform in mixed martial arts. Uh, it's it's it means everything to to us. Uh, because now we're going to have the opportunity on top of our national broadcast partners in Canada. Uh, we already announced at the press conference that the English uh, broadcast partner will be Fight Network. But it also means that outside of Canada, we will be in every single household uh, around the world that is uh, that, that has a, subscri- a UFC Fight Pass subscriber. And this is huge. This is huge for us to go get huge, big sponsors. It's huge for the fighters because... 
uh, I mean, they're going to they're going to be fighting in front of a worldwide audience. And keep in mind that all these kids, their dream, the ultimate dream is to go to the UFC. And now they are fighting in TKO, but on the UFC channel. So they will get more exposure than guys that fight that are not fighting on UFC Fight Pass. And you know. Uh, think about it. After the weigh-in, when you do the meeting with all the fighters, I always do that. I talk to them. I kept, you know, I do my little motivation speech. I mean, I don't even have to do that speech anymore because I don't have to tell them, to tell them. You know, the the next day they're fighting on UFC Fight Pass. Can you imagine the performance all these guys are going to put? I mean, they're fighting in front of the world. They're fighting in front of the UFC. I mean, this also will, I, I in my opinion will make the show the shows even better because you're going to see kids giving their all in the ring. And how big will that be for signing new fighters? Because some fighters will say we'll, we'll, they'll be in talks with another organization. Then they start asking about a TV deal or a broadcast partner and realize that their family and friends aren't going to be able to watch their fights. But in this case, um, just about anyone can watch Tikio live. So how big will that be for signing new fighters and not bribing them? Because it's not a bribe. It, it's a real thing. You are on Fight Pass, but saying, hey, we're on Fight Pass. Everyone can watch you. How big do you think that will be um, having an influence on, on the fighters you sign? Well, it is huge. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, we're, we're obviously, we're, we would never use that to bribe fighters, but it gives us an edge because edge because first if we bring a guy from BC I mean his family his friends everybody will be able to watch him fight pass also uh, having a platform like fat fight pass on top of our national broadcast partners uh, helps fighters uh, get sponsored as much as it helps us to get big sponsors you have to keep in mind in mind that it also helps the fighters to go get bigger sponsors uh, bigger sponsorship money so this is a this is a this is a huge deal, like I said, for the organization because of all the all the uh, uh, because of the opportunity involved of, of you know of, get, of getting major sponsors, major uh, corporate partners, uh, major advertisers. But what is good for us is good for the fighters as well because they're also selling advertising sponsorship and 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 and, 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 and corporate partnerships. And you know, and obviously, uh, as we said earlier, uh, the exposure. I mean. It's humongous for for them. I mean, if you fight with TKO, everybody can. I, I mean, if you're a fighter and you're fighting for TKO, all your friends can watch. So that 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 yes, it it does give us a big edge. And also another benefit for the fighters fighting at TKO on your cards um, will be that they do have a better chance of, of making it to the UFC and making it to the bigger leagues because look at Titan FC, they're on Fight Pass and, and they're having new uh, fighters signed to the UFC every day it seems. Um, uh, that's another reason why fighters should fight for TKO, not just because they have the exposure of everyone can watch them, but also UFC officials, UFC matchmakers will be watching them, and there will just be that greater opportunity for them to potentially get signed to the UFC. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good point, but also you have to, to, to remember that one of, the reason, uh, one of the reasons we did this deal with the UFC is that UFC believed in our product. Uh, UFC believed in, our, in, in what TKO uh, brought to them over the years. I mean, look at all those guys that made it. I mean, there's like 75 guys, I believe, that fought in TKO and ended up in the UFC. Uh, I talk about those guys from here, but Rich Franklin fought for us before he ended up in the UFC. Same thing with Sean Shirk, Uriah Faber, Atsuyoki. I mean, I could name like dozens of guys that, you know, fought in TKO before they made it to the UFC. So they're aware of our tradition of building champions. So uh, obviously uh, we, we we didn't lose that overnight. So on top of these officials that you're talking about being able to watch uh, our fights uh, with with more ease, uh, it's also the fact that TKO has always brought top-notch fighters to the UFC uh, to the world stage, and uh, our tradition of building champions is very strong, and uh, it will remain very strong. Do you look at TKO as the official uh, feeding organization for the UFC for Canada? Feeder organization, I should say. I should say. Um, I, I wouldn't go that far. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna do our best 
to be the organization. We're going to do our best to, to be the organization that's going to build uh, the bigger fighters. Obviously, that that that's always been been a pride for me to uh, to build to build guys into superstars. You know, like I said before, that's what I do best, and that's what I'll keep doing. But you know, I mean, uh, obviously, you also have to keep in mind these guys grow up, win fights, and their dream. Uh, uh, does it, their dream is to fight in the UFC. So obviously, if they're winners, they're champions, and uh, they're exciting, uh, UFC will want them. But uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to live up to the hype, to the hype, and uh, and you know, uh, send them uh, as many fight, fighters as we can. And uh, for us, it, it really, uh, it's really a matter of of, of building top talent and uh, giving our fans exciting fights. It's not about just you know building fighters for the UFC. We're, about, we're building fighters for our fans. Uh, we're building fighters for, for, for the fighters to be able to make a career out of it. But obviously, we don't want to lose all our talent overnight. Uh, you know, we have to do it in a very intelligent way. Where, just like we did in the past, you know, when, when we knew George St. Pierre or uh, David Loiseau were on, on, on the verge of making it to the UFC, we started building Cote, we started building Dominic and Stout. So when George and David left, then we, we, we were not left uh, with nothing. We had those guys that we built under St. Pierre and Loiseau. And then when these guys left, we brought in Steve Bosse, and we brought in uh, Chris Rodecki. We, you know, we, we always had the next wave, and that's what we need to do. I mean, uh, on the roster, all the guys we have signed right now, I mean, I don't want to name names right now, but I know exactly who will be with the UFC in about a year, a year and a half. So we need to, I mean, we need to feature these guys and then make sure we sign the guys under them that are going to replace them when they leave. So it sounds like you don't really want to, your, your purpose of TKO isn't necessarily to be the official feeder league for the UFC, but at the same time, you would still be all right with with uh, with the UFC signing some of your, some of your talent. Is, is that oh, correct, just to clarify? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, obviously, we're, we're in a partnership. I mean, the partnership is with UFC Fight Pass, but obviously, like I said, I mean, you don't you don't really see a lot of fighters, uh, you know, going public saying, "Oh, I want to start an MMA career because my dream is to be a Bellator fighter." Nothing against Bellator, you know, they're great guys, but the dream of all those fighters is to fight in the UFC, right? So, you know, once we 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 build a guy and uh, he becomes a superstar here, has seven, eight, nine, ten fights, uh, the fighter will want to go to the UFC, you know. So you know we're 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 very happy to create those opportunities for those athletes, but at the same time we need to do it in a in a way where we don't hurt the promotion, you know. So uh, and that's not up to the UFC or up to the fighters. It's up to us to make sure uh, we uh, we're always prepared. We're always preparing the next wave. When we know a guy is about to to to, to leave to the to, to the UFC or but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily like the 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 the, uh, the label feeder league, but you know, um, everybody's a feeder league at UFC. Even Bellator is. I mean, look at Will Brooks. He, you know, he, he became a Bellator champion, left the UFC. I mean, UFC is the biggest show. You know, it's the, they're the biggest company. They own you know UFC Fight Pass, the biggest digital streaming service in the world of mixed martial arts, and we just happen to. Make a deal with them. <laughs> yes, very true. Um, the resurrection of TKO has made some really massive waves already in the MMA community. Even though it was just announced, the return of TKO was just announced. Um, it, it's especially big up here in Canada, of course, which makes sense. Um, considering it's been eight or so years since the promotion last event, um, did you expect all of this overwhelming feedback and support you've been getting? Uh, you see, Nick, th this is one of the strangest things. And we were there at the press conference today, and before it started, I was talking with some of the fighters because we had all we, we had old fighters that are retired that used to be superstars in TKO. They were there to support the new young guys. They they went on stage and talked about it. And at some point, maybe ten minutes before we started the press conference, I was there talking with Jason Saint Louis, uh, Donald Louis May, Jonathan Goulet, and we were talking, and we were like, you know what? It feels it's like we're doing a press conference the day after the last TKO. It feels like those eight years 
you know, that separate today's press conference and the last TKO back in October of 2008 was just yes. It felt like it was just yesterday. We felt the same amount of support from media, the same amount of support from the fans. We felt the love. I mean, those fans have been. I mean, we 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 we're like at 15,000 people that are following us, and it's been like 10 days. That, that in Canada, I mean, and, and that's a lot. And and we we haven't advertised very much other than social media right now. And you see, tickets go on sale tomorrow, and uh, I would be surprised if there's tickets left next week. So it, there's a big buzz, and and you know, and, and that's the thing. If you start a new promotion and you call it uh, whatever uh, SS whatever, you don't get that buzz. TKO as a as a humongous history. There there's a humongous uh, tradition. There's uh, I mean, it, it felt it, it was very it, what what we experienced today as uh, TKO, as me as TKO president and all these guys as former pioneers of the org. I mean, these guys built TKO with me. I mean, they put their art, soul, blood, and sweat in this ring, and that's what built this company. And today was just a very uh, unique feeling, uh, you know, and, and, and I could tell even those guys that are not fighting anymore that are retired, this press con- conference today meant a lot to them. Uh, mental, oh, actually, it meant as much to them as it meant to me, and obviously as it meant to the uh, those new fighters that are super excited right now. Now, I of course wasn't there at the press conference live, but even on just Twitter and so and other social media platforms, I could see the buzz. I could see not even just all Canadians, but even people in the states knew about TKO, the Fight Pass deal, everything coming together. Everyone was excited, especially Canadians, because this is huge for Canadian MMA. But at the same time, with with all that said, um, did this buzz surprise you at all? Or, or on the other hand, were you expecting um, these old fans, these fans of TKO eight years ago, to still be there? Were you expecting that, or did that somewhat surprise you? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I was expecting a buzz, but um, I was, uh, you know, I was always wondering what happened to those seven, eight, nine thousand fans that that were supporting us at the Bell Center because. Ever since TKO uh, left the scene in 2008, uh, there's been a ton of shows uh, in this province and across the country. And but let's focus on this province here because that's that's been our own base. Uh, all the shows since TKO left, nobody was able to to, to get more than 2,000. I'm the only one who got more than 2,000 people one night, and it was the inaugural Instinct event where we had 5,000. But other than that, everybody did 800. 900, 1,000 people. 1,500 was a huge, uh, huge uh, accomplishment for some some of those small promotions. So I was I was always wondering where where did the these people go? Where where are those fans? You know, and uh, what what I what I was very happy about is by by creating the, these Facebook uh, page and Facebook groups, we kind of found back all those customers because. Uh, and I was talking to Tom Wright about that earlier today. Uh, there was a post that we put about the signature of Chris Orodecki, uh last week. Um, there's a guy who put a comment under it, uh, a guy that I don't know, a fan, uh, Sebastian something. And he, he put up, he put up a, a comment and he, 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 uh, he tagged about 25 guys. Uh, that by their names in the post, and then he said uh, at the at the end, let's uh, le- let's continue our tradition from ten years ago, and let's go to those TKO events. So I clicked on all these guys, and they, I mean, none of them were friends with me, none of them were in my groups, none of them were anywhere. So I was like, you see, with one comment, I just found back twenty one of my old customers, and that's something I'm very happy about, and you know. Uh, spreading the word out there with all the buzz that we're getting, I'm pretty confident that we'll get those customers back. And uh, after we do those, uh, we, we finish this first season at uh, at the Toyu, we'll be able to to go back to to, to venues like Bell Center and be uh, very very successful. Yes, that is very cool indeed. Uh, let's talk about this fight pass deal a bit more deep. Um, how did this actually come together? Um, did you contact it? Did you contact them? Were they interested right away? How did that all come together? Um, 
obviously, like I said, the, the, these are people I talk to, to on, on almost a daily basis uh, with, with my with my fighters and you know my, with my dealings with the UFC in the past 17 years. Uh, so there, there, there's a line of communication that's there all the time. So um, it happened in a discussion about uh, about the status of, of, of MMA in Canada, about the sta- status of of uh, of uh, yeah of MMA in Canada, and uh, we were talking about you know how great it was back then with TKO, how how how, how exciting and spectacular were those fighters that we were bringing back back then uh, bringing the, to them back then and the, 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 the then the discussion turned on to the possibility of uh, of doing a, a deal with UFC fight pass to revive TKO and uh, we, we, we started discussing from 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 that base very cool now you also have a broadcast deal with fight network up in up here in Canada, uh, why is TKO not exclusively on Fight Pass like some of the other organizations already on Fight Pass, like Titan FC? You can't find Titan anywhere else other than Fight Pass. Why will you be able to find TKO on other platforms other than Fight Pass? Uh, well, first, Fight Network is a cable is a cable uh, a channel. It's a, it's not a digital streaming service. And when I did my negotiations with them, it was very important because you have to to remember that the the reason we we built back back in the days, the reason why we built TKO in such a successful brand uh, was because of our presence on the, you know we had a weekly show on RDS, uh, and that helped us a lot. We also had a sh- uh, we had a series on TSN, and then we 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 ended up doing a deal with Fight Network back then also. But it was very important for us. Uh, to keep the possibility of uh, of selling our brand in Canada, so that that yeah, I mean that was part of the negotiations, and we uh, and that's something they understood, and uh, we we were, we were able to come to an agreement where um, TKO would be exclusive worldwide on 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 a, a UFC Fight Pass, but we would also be able to to, to sell our events here in Canada. Now, I agree with your, what, what, what you're saying, and I'm glad it's on Fight Network, because sometimes Fight Pass, like, it, it is an, a fairly new digital streaming service, and I do like Fight Pass, I do, I am a subscriber, of course, but at the same time, sometimes it, it can be glitchy, so I, I'm very glad that you're on Fight Network, but just to play devil's advocate a little bit, Fight Pass is available in Canada, so what is the need for Fight Network? Uh, well, then again, Fight Network is uh, is a cable company. Uh, obviously, I can understand your question where uh, you, you could see that they're a competitor or it's conflicting, but it's not really conflicting because um, the way the, the way we're going to work those events is uh, even though we're going to be on Fight Network and 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 on a, a French uh, channel that we're still negotiating about. Uh, the 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 subscriber base of of, of fight pass will improve significantly uh, everywhere in, in in Quebec and everywhere in Canada because sometimes I mean fight pass you can watch it on your phone you can watch it on your iPad you can watch it on your computer you can watch it anywhere you are so you know the only the only time uh, a fan will probably choose uh, fight network over over fight pass. Will be if he's in if he's if he's in his living room, but you know in in 2016, uh, I don't remember when's the last time I sat in my living room to watch something, you know. So uh, I, I don't think it's a I don't think the fact that we're on Fight Network and or on one of our French uh, broadcast partners will, will affect anything. If not, I think it will help Fight Pass because obviously. Uh, throughout the program, the programming we we will uh, market L out of a fight pass through advertising, through uh, obviously they're going to be on on the ring mat. So you know, I think at the end of the day, it's uh, it's going to be very profitable for for uh, for everybody involved. Is the French broadcaster going to be RDS? Uh, uh, we are talking to RDS. We haven't signed a deal with them. We're also talking with. Uh, other networks, and uh, we're expecting uh, to be able to announce something early next week. Uh, you know, it's uh, obviously. Uh, I mean, I, I've been working with RDS for 17 years. 
Uh, I'm very familiar with them. I, I, I mean, I worked. I still work there to this day. So obviously, um, this would be my, my my preference. But you know, business is business. I mean, if 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 the offer is better and it makes more sense for TKO on a different channel, then we'll we'll have to go there. But you know, at this point in time, uh, we're still talking to to both networks and. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, this we will be able to announce something shortly. And can you say I, I know nothing is signed, as you said there? But can you say what the other network or multiple net networks you're talking to, other than RDS? No, oh, there's only two sports channels in Quebec. There's RDS and TVA Sports. Okay. TVA Sports. So obviously, we're, we're talking to, right. to those two. Fair enough. Um, because I mean, the the other channels in, 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 in the other French channels in Quebec. Like v, VTV, uh, they, they don't. I mean, we we were on TQS back then with TKO, but now they're not interested in sporting events. So the two options right now are are RDS and, and TVA. Does Patrick Cote working with RDS uh, have any influence on who you choose and who you go with? Just because Cote, um, TKO veteran, of course, UFC fighter, doing some broadcast work right now, um, that would be kind of cool to have him, uh, perhaps doing commentary or or doing analysis for your shows. I believe Cote has an exclusive agreement with UFC, so I don't think that would be uh, that, that will be a possibility. But also, it depends what type of deal we we, we reach with either RDS or TVS Paw, because there's a possibility that because you have to remember if we do sign with RDS, they are already the broadcast partner of the UFC and they, they're 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 airing a lot of live UFCs. So if we do a deal with them, maybe our deal will be uh, tape delay events uh, in form of... Because uh, what we used to do with RDS is with one show, we were doing four or three or four one-hour episodes uh, on RDS uh, featuring the top fights from, from the event, right? So maybe that's a recipe they want to, a recipe they want to do again. So if that's the case, then you know we, we don't have to worry about taping it live so that 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 gives us uh, another another kind of scenario on who's going to host it no. but if it's live obviously you know it's i mean we have to to it won't be the same uh, the same deal but um as far as i i would bet that whatever deal we do with either rds or tva won't be a live broadcast it won't be I don't think it will be. Okay, that's that's interesting because it, it seems like in 2016 a lot of people are not in favor of tape delay. I, I'm sure live would be your preference. Um, you can clarify that for me. Um, but yeah, just talk well, my about like, prefer my, or, my, my preference is live because personally I never watch fights on tape delay. Never, ever. But you have to keep in mind for a network that's looking for Canadian content because – for, for for TV network, they are, I mean they have to respect a certain percentage of Canadian content, and if she, if she, if if TK was live, let's say on Friday November fourth, uh, and it's a three hour or four hour show, that's one night, four hours. If we do a tape delay deal, we they can use like four three or four episodes of one hour and and share it, you know, and 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 run one month with it. So it, it, I mean obviously for us. Uh, we're 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 gonna we're, what what we want is to get the best deal for the company. But at the end of the day, if the best deal for the company, money wise, is a tape delay situation, then I mean we don't care. I mean it's 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 up to the network. That's what they want, and you know it, it's gonna mean more uh, French subscriber for UFC Fight Pass. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Um, but to to clarify and backtrack a little bit, will it be live on Fight Network for English viewers? Yes, it will be live on Fight Network. Okay, perfect. Um, Chris Horodecki is on the card, of course, that was just announced today. Um, he's, of course, one of Sean Tompkins, the late Sean Tompkins uh, fighters. Um, I, I assume that was kind of a no-brainer. It, it seems pretty fitting to have him on the card. Uh, yeah, obviously we wanted to feature some of the still active former TKO stars. And uh, obviously when, when, when we, we ended up finishing the deal with the UFC, uh, my first uh, priority uh, was uh, Chris Orodecki. Uh I have other priority, priorities that you know hopefully will sign in the next few days and we'll be able to announce. But Orodeki was one of them. 
and uh, it's a kid that 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 was built in TKO. He was, I mean, he was just 18 years old. He uh, was amazing, and the fan the fans loved him. And he's still active. He's still exciting. He's only 28 years old. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, for some reason, people are are, are are kind of forgot about the Rodecki, but he, he's 21 and six. There's not too many guys that have a great record like that in MMA. So I mean, I, I think right now he's he's at, he, he had some up ups and downs lately in his career, but I, I could tell from talking to him, talking to his management and his training partners, talking to Mark Hominick, uh coming back home for him might be what he needed to bring back his career to the next level, because he's never lost a fight in TKO, and uh, and that's something that would give I think will give him the extra motivation to, to come back, uh, you know, the guy that, that we labeled as the Sidney Crosby of MMA because he was so great. And I think, I think that's what we're going to get out of Orodeki. I think we're going to get the best Orodeki on November 4th. Very cool. Cool. Now, some other signings you made. Top prospect TJ Laramie, who, of course, is a featherweight. His brother, Tony Laramie. Um, how did those two come together? And uh, who are some others? If you can share, and I don't know if you can, um, who are some others yeah. we can see in the cage? Uh, well, the Laramie brothers, I heard tons about these kids. Uh, I mean, great things. Uh, uh, Harmonic told me about them. Uh, every Actually, there's so, so many people that talked to me about them. And then uh, Alex Caparici, who's the matchmaker for Rec MMA, uh, he's not really managing them, but he's kind of helping them. Uh, he contacted me, and um, and that was like maybe a week ago. And uh, we started talking, and um, obviously it was very hard for me, you know, uh, to, to, to keep the whole fight passing to myself, because I did, because all those fighters, when they showed up at the press conference today, nobody was aware. When we announced it on the stage, they were all surprised. Nobody knew about it. So, uh, so uh, you know, the, we, we started talking to the, we, with the Larry brothers. We, we we exchanged offers and counter offers, and we we came to an agreement. And and I'm, and I'm very happy because I believe these two kids are, are the next crop of great Ontario fighters. And uh, you know, I think we at TKO, uh, it's a home that has built before Ontario, great Ontario talent. Like uh, like I said before, Arminic, Stout, Clements, Orodeki, Pearson, uh, and so on. You know, we 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 we've built fighters from all over the country, uh, and 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 that's the example I was giving you earlier. There's no other promotion that do that. I mean, if a promotion that were an uh, example in Alberta, they're gonna build the uh, the guys from Alberta, and that's it. Then this other company in in BC will only build their BC guys. With TKO, we don't care where you're from. You're Canadian, we're going to build you. Yeah, that is very cool, and that's something I noticed. You look at Prestige FC, um, they're going to be building up the, their, their uh, fighters from Regina and Saskatoon and whatnot, so that's something I really like, that, uh, something you're doing. Um, how much of an impact will TKO, will the return of TKO make in the Canadian MMA scene, specifically the regional circuit? Um, because like you said, look at TJ Lermy. He was just booked to fight in Alberta very recently for Hard Knock. See, of course, um, everything happened. He didn't make weight, so the fight didn't happen. But he was booked to fight in Alberta, and now it's closer. It's it's only a, a province away. It's a bit closer for him. Um, how? Just as an example, there, how much of an impact really will uh, the return of TKO make uh, for the Canadian MMA scene? It will be huge because we we we've, we've always been very vocal about what I just told you. I mean, I mean, obviously. Our shows are in our shows are in Quebec, so we're always going to have a little bit more guys from Quebec on the card because obviously we want to sell tickets, right? But fighters are also aware, hey, with Stefan and TKO, uh, even if you're from BC, if you, Alberta, Ontario, Newfoundland, whatever, wherever you're from, if you're good, you're talented, you're exciting, he's going to build he's going to build the shit out of you. He's going to push you like crazy. And uh, I mean that I was telling you before about our tradition of building champions, and that's what this tradition is. We built great champions from Quebec, but we also built great champions from all over the country, and actually from all over the world. So uh, I think uh, th that's something fighters are aware of. And now today, with the addition of UFC Fight Pass, 
it it makes this all uh, it, it, it makes this whole thing even 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 more strong, you know, because you have this guy that has a tradition of building champions, of of pushing guys from all over the country, but on top of him doing what he does best, you're live on the UFC Fight Pass. So it's it's an accumulation of great things for the fighters. It's uh, I think it's a great deal for us. But like I said before, it's it's a great deal for the fighters. Now, back to the signings and whatnot. You know, TJ Laramie, another example. Um, he actually said that he uh, it's going to be like a long-term deal, a multi-fight deal. So are, are most of these contracts you're going to be signing with fighters multi-fight deals? Will they be one-fight deals? Will they be ex exclusive contracts? What's the deal there for, for most of these contracts with your fighters? Uh, the, most of them, uh, actually all of them, except a few exceptions because of prior commitment by some fighters uh, are, are, are multiple fight. There are five, five fight deals, four fight deals, depending on the situation. We have a couple of guys on one fight deal because of other commitments, but yes, they will be uh, exclusive deals. Uh, but uh, those, this, these exclusivity deals are not about blocking fighters from fighting elsewhere. It's mostly... Uh, because we're, we'll be doing six shows in one year. That's a show every two months, uh, and you know we want to make sure our top guys uh, stay active with us. So, uh, but for example, let's say we have a guy that is under a five-year, uh, five, uh, a five-fight deal. Uh, after the second fight, he's one and one, and I'm not expecting to use him on 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 the on the, on the next show. And he has an opportunity to fight, for example, in Prestige. I'll give him the written consent to go do this fight because I, I don't want to, you know, leave him home and do nothing if I'm not going to use him. But it's mainly because this this exclusivity clause is to give us the ability uh, to keep these guys active with us. But then again, if if it's not if it's not something that's going to hurt the company. We're not going to stop him from, from going elsewhere. Right. Now, TJ Laramie, to bring him up once again, he, he actually has a fight book right now. I, I can't recall which organization it's for, but that won't be a problem. Um, it, it's no, basically... it won't. That, 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 that was part of the negotiations for both Laramie brothers. Okay. TJ has a fight, uh, I believe, September September 17th. I'm not sure. and uh, uh, Or is it September 7th? Anyway, he has a fight coming up, and uh, Tony... The younger brother is not going to start fighting for us until January because he's still 17 years old. He's actually turning 18 a few days before uh, the the the, the, uh, the TKO 37 in January, so he'll be uh, he'll be able to fight there, but he won't be able to fight in November. And he also has uh, I think one or two amateur fights uh, scheduled, so it's part of their contracts uh, that they're allowed doing those fights because they have prior commitments. Okay, but f but after their fights, it's going to be mostly um, fighting for TKO, correct? Well, if T.J. Laramie delivers uh, what he's supposed to deliver with the talent he has and w with all the hype that, that that's around him, uh, uh, and he's exciting and he's winning, and he, I mean, he'll be fighting on every card. I mean, look at Omnic. I mean, how many, how many TKOs did Omnic uh, miss when he started? M not many, maybe one or two. And I, I, I'm not, I don't remember correctly, but I, I, I bet he, I bet he, I guess he was hurt. I mean, if you're exciting, you're winning. Uh, the fans want you back. You'll be fighting on every single card. I mean, uh, for me, it's about putting the best show. So, in order to, to, to put the best show out there, you need to put to put your best fighters, and obviously have uh, ingenious matchmaking to make sure you put. Exciting, fair and exciting fights. And also another good thing about having these multi-fight deals in, in, in six fights or, or six cards a year is something that's been a big issue recently or, or in the past couple of years I should say in Canada is fighters being active. Some fighters haven't fought for two years but in this case fighting for TKO there is a good chance they'll be fighting every two or three months so that that's also something that I believe is huge. Yeah it's huge because I mean this we, we announced the whole schedule uh, today, and all those 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 dates are booked and paid for. Uh, they reserve with the venue, they reserve with the commission, they reserve reserve with the networks. Uh, they're already on schedule on Fight Pass. I mean, it's those dates. Uh, I mean, anytime you, uh, as a fighter or as an agent, when I look at a promotion, you know, you're always going to go with the promotion that's going to keep your guy 
active. And I mean, there's nobody here in Canada that can, that is more active than us right now. Uh, we're going to be active. We're going to be on fight pass, and we're going to be building champions. So. I think, like I said before, uh, <laughs> uh, I repeat myself, but uh, th this is a great deal for everybody involved. I mean, uh, everybody's a winner. Where TKO is a winner, the fighters are a winner, Fight Pass is a winner. Uh, everybody's a winner. It's uh, it's a great day for Canadian MMA today. No, I can. Yeah, you know, there's just proof right there why you're so busy right now because you have the whole schedule for next year booked and and things along those lines. How are you able to do that? Because um, you look at other. Canadian MMA organizations like Prestige, like BFL, among others, Unified, and, and they don't have five shows booked in advance. Sometimes they maybe have one, but but that's at the most. How are you able to have uh, cards booked year uh, a year in advance, basically? Uh, well, well, I mean, I surrounded myself with the best. Uh, I have a great team working with me. Uh, today we announced part of that team, but uh, there's way more people involved. Uh, and uh, we're, we, we are, uh, I mean, and I'm still building the team. Obviously, uh, there, there are still some uh, key elements missing that, that, that I will hire in the next couple of days or next couple of weeks. But we have a strong team. Uh, our production team, team is amazing. Our sound and lighting uh, uh, team is, is the same one we had back then. I have a great, great, great amount of amazing, talented people working with me. And, uh, and I mean, these people mean the world to me because uh, they've been supporting me through the high time, uh, through the highs and lows. And uh, for them, it's the same thing. Today was a great day because uh, uh, we're having a lot of fun when we do these shows. It's uh, we're, we're having a blast, and you know now we're gonna we're gonna have a blast, you know, for the next couple of years. And uh, and it's very very exciting. So um, and, and back to your question, I mean. Obviously, we looked at the schedule with Fight Pass. We looked at the schedule of available dates with with the venue and with uh, the commission, and uh, we decided to go and and book our all year, so fans can know in advance what, what's coming up. And we we're, we're all actually thinking of uh, selling season tickets, uh, so I mean, a fan w would be able to buy a ticket and have the exact same seat for the whole season. So th those are. are are things that uh, we are thinking about, and one of the reasons why we wanted to announce all those five, all those cards in advance. Very interesting. Now, last question about TKO. Um, is there any specific reasoning TKO 36 to return? Is it is in November, or, or just because negotiations happened in July? Did did November just line up um, perfectly for the return? Uh, well, actually, um, the fact. I mean. Um, to, to promote a show properly like that, like to, 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 to make it a, a huge success, you, you, you need at least two months. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we, uh, doing a show in September would have been very, very slow. I mean, it, it was a possibility. And we were actually thinking of starting on November 9th. Uh, and, and November 4th was going to be the second date. Uh, so uh, now, so... We, it was a possibility that we would start in in, in September, uh, but then we looked at the schedule, we looked at the dates, and we were, you know, we wanted to to make sure the first show uh, was going to be something special, uh, you know, as special as this press conference was today. Uh, we're going to be bringing, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, events the week of the event, uh, where where fans will be able to meet with the old stars. Uh, will be able to 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 interact a lot with with, with us, with the organization and the fighters. So uh, we wanted to have more time to get ready for all those events leading to the event. So that's why we decided to to start in November. Now, as a guy who knows his stuff when it comes to the MMA scene up here north of the border, who do you think is the next Canadian star um, that'll sell tickets? Make a name for for himself and eventually make it to the UFC. If you have to pick out one or two names, who do you think will be that next star? Um, I think the next guy that will make it to the UFC is uh, Xavier Alloway. Uh, he's already seven and zero. Uh, he's killing everybody at what at one thirty five. Uh, and and by the way, we we have a good idea on who he's going to fight on November fourth. 
and it will be the biggest test of his career. And I can tell you something, if he wins that fight on November 4th, uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of knocks on his door. So I think this kid is maybe one or two fights away from making it to UFC. He's a bantamweight, and that's a division where, where, where Sean Shelby needs guys right now. So um, I think Alawi could be the next one to make it. But as far as who will be the next superstar, uh, even though I think Alawi could be a superstar, uh, I think, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, there's the, the Jordan brothers are very, very good. Obviously, Laramie's are good, too. The brothers are amazing. Uh, but keep an eye on Adam Dixa. Uh, he's a big heavyweight. Uh, he's uh, six foot, almost six foot five, 260 pounds. Uh, he's fast. He's lightning fast for, for heavyweight. Uh, this guy could go 10 rounds. He, he has one of the best cardio I've ever seen out of a heavyweight. Uh, he destroyed everybody in the amateur level. at the amateur level. I think he's something like 17 and 0 not um, I think he, 17 and 0 with 16 knockouts as a pro is 2 and 0 with two knockouts uh, the, the kid is amazing and he's a super athlete he was named the top football player in Canada uh, I think four years ago he's only 25 years old and I really really think uh, this kid is going places and, and uh, you know could be the first big uh, Canadian heavyweight in the UFC very interesting stuff. Uh, like your insight, insight there. Now let's talk a bit, George St. Pierre. Um, he, of course, fighter, veteran of TKO. Um, what are your thoughts on his potential return? Uh, I mean, I've said it. I mean, uh, I, I, I've said it a few times in the past two years that George was going to come back. I mean, I've had discussions with George. Uh, he's not going to come. I don't think he will come back for a long run, but I think he's going to come back for a couple of super fights. Uh, he's very intelligent, so he's going to choose wisely which fights are. Uh, how can I say that? Which fights uh, mean something for him, and uh, which fights will mean something to the fans? Because he wants, obviously, one of George's main priorities is to leave a legacy. So uh, he will choose fights that will get people excited, and will also get him excited. So. Um, I remember from having dinner with him two years ago. Uh, they were really, really pushing for a comeback somewhere in 2015 to fight Anderson Silva, but then Anderson got his, uh, his suspension for steroids. That kind of killed the deal because you know George was uh, such a big advocate of the the whole uh, uh, you know uh, p uh, performance and enhancing drugs test and stuff. So he wasn't going to go fight a guy that just got caught for steroids, you know. So uh, yeah, so I think the the the, the, the Silva situation kind of slowed down his uh, his desire to return. So that's why he didn't return in two thousand in two thousand fifteen. Because in my opinion, he would have been back in two thousand fifteen to fight Silva. So now two thousand sixteen, we probably won't see him till the end of the year. Because anyways, he just started the USADA program, so he has to be tested for four months. So that brings him to what uh, December. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Georgia is coming back, and it's a good thing for the Canadian MMA scene because George is a great athlete. Uh, he's the biggest star in, in the history of the country, probably also in the history of, of the UFC. So uh, it's going to create some excitement uh, here in, in Canada. Now, who do you think George should fight, and who do you think he will fight? You, you know... If if McGregor didn't lose to Diaz the first time, I'm pretty sure the reason. And keep in mind, George was there, and George never goes to the UFC. Uh, in the last, George rarely goes to the UFC in the past two years. So if George was there that night at UFC, uh, what number was it? One ninety eight. One ninety six. One ninety six. Uh, there was a reason behind it, and I'm pretty sure if Connor smokes Diaz that night they announced a fight between him and George, and that would have been the biggest fight in, T in, uh, sorry, in UFC's... I was going to say TKO. That would have been the biggest fight in UFC's history. I mean, can you imagine? McGregor beat Diaz, then challenges St. Pierre. That, that, I mean, that's two million buys right there. 
So. Yes, that that definitely is uh, what they probably wanted to headline UFC 200. In fact, I actually think they were either aiming for that fight or, or the Lawler McGregor fight, um, which of course never happened. But um, but yeah, who, who who do you think though? Um, now that McGregor, even even if McGregor beats Diaz coming up in a week or so, um, I'm not sure how viable of an option that is right now just because McGregor he probably should focus at lightweight and, and maybe even featherweight but right now with McGregor out of the picture who do you think he will end up fighting um do you think it'll be Bisbing do you think it'll be Tyron Woodley it seems like those are probably the two most likely options um, I, I'm not very I'm not too crazy about him fighting uh, uh, Woodley because if he fights Woodley that means he becomes a champion again and that means he has to fight whoever's a contender, which is not necessarily the top, the the, the biggest super fight. You know what I'm saying? Because keep in mind, if he, he fights with Woodley and beats Woodley, then he has to fight uh, Wonderboy Thompson. Which I mean, I love Thompson. It's a it's a great fighter, but it's not a super fight. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and you know, I think he's gonna stick to super fights. Even even Bisping, I I, I don't know. I mean. Uh, I don't have anybody in mind right now. I didn't even put any thought into that, but you know, I, I see him involved in in something bigger than that. But you know, again, Sue, I I just don't know yet. But you know, right now, obviously, because of of, of whoever is uh, is available on the market, there's Woodley and 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 and, and, and this thing. But I'm not sure about those two guys. I'm. I'm pretty sure George has somebody else in mind, uh, something bigger in mind. I don't know what it is, honestly, but I don't know. I mean, him fighting Woodley or, or this thing doesn't really excite me. I don't know. What, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really excite me. Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, the one point I will disagree with you here is actually that um, it seems like look at Bisping fighting H Hendo, uh, Dan Henderson next. That isn't Dan Henderson isn't the the most deserving middleweight contender right now, title contender. It, it's either Jacare, Yoel Romero, maybe even Weidman or Rockwell. It's definitely not Dan Hendo. Dan Hendo Henderson. So there is that sense that champions can get their way right now a little bit with Tyron Woodley wanting either GSP or Diaz. Meanwhile, Wonderboy is right there and, and probably more than deserving of a title shot. So that's the only part I'm going to disagree with you there because um, GSP, um, I do think he can get that super fight if he wants it. And, and at the same time, um, I don't. I get. It's interesting. Like like you said, uh, it's really hard to call um, because GSP may not even come back. Who who knows at this point? No, I, I, he's coming back for sure. That that you can you can you can bet your house he's coming back. But the, the thing is, George, and that's something people uh, didn't don't know really mention. George could easily make fifty five easily. So I mean, the, the, there might be options there at fifty five too. So I mean. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe he's going to end up fighting Woodley. But in my opinion, Woodley shouldn't even fight George or Diaz. He should fight Thompson. That's the, the guy that is right there knocking on the door, and that's the guy that deserves it the most. I mean, I don't think Nick Diaz deserves anything right now. I mean, he's been suspended for one year. He hasn't fought in a year. Why would he? Why why would he deserve a title shot? I mean, of I mean, he's. If you look at the UFC rosters, everybody in the top 20 deserves it more than Nick Diaz. I like Nick, but he hasn't fought in a year and got suspended for, you know. I don't know why he would be put in that position and, right now. And he hasn't fought, or, and he hasn't won for four or five years. Exactly. So, I mean, there's no reason for him to be put in that position, in my opinion. And uh, he, should, he should, you know, get back, win a couple of fights. And then maybe why not a rematch between Diaz and Lawler? The first one was exciting, so yes, uh, there you go. If he beats Lawler, then maybe he deserves it, you know. Yes, I agree with you on that. Um, moving away from GSP, um, you of course are a manager of of a handful of fighters. Um, from a manager's uh, viewpoint, what are your thoughts on the union stuff going around right now? Uh, just recently, we had the launch of the Professional Fighters Association. Um, to kind of go along with the. Uh, the other mixed martial arts association uh, right now. Nothing's been put in place. There is no union at this time. But just as a manage, as a manager specifically, what are your thoughts on on the union stuff that could be developing right now over time? Um, I'm really, I'm still not 
too sure about it. I'm still mumbling about it because you you, you need to be sure of uh, of if if these people have the fighters' interest as their main reason of being formed, you know. And you know, I, I didn't talk to these people yet. Obviously, we we got the letters uh, a few weeks ago. Kevin got it. Steve got it. Uh, they actually they emailed the fighters directly. They never emailed the managers, which is something weird in my opinion. Um, and uh, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, you know, I'm not really a, a union guy uh, in life, but you know, it's uh, it's. I mean, obviously, everyone everybody wants to make a lot of money. Everybody wants to make more money, but at the end of the day. You need to be sure that whatever you do, uh, it won't uh, it won't kill your opportunities, or it won't uh, you know. Because I mean, unions are unions are good for some guys, but they're bad for other guys. Depending where you're on the roster, you know. If you're a top guy, union is amazing. But if you're in the middle there, it's not a great thing. So it, it, it all depends on what the program is and uh, what what they present to the fighters. But at the end of the day. It's a fire, you know, even though you're a manager or whatever you are, at the end of the day, it's the fighter's decision. They're the boss. They decide if they want to go on these uh, union things or not. Uh, but I'm not in a position to be able right now to uh, give uh, my advice to my fighters about them because we're no, we know so little about it. So once we know more about it, we'll be able to advise our fighters to, to, to jump aboard or not. But, you know, the way they, they did it is that you know, they just email the fighters directly with the letter, please sign here and uh, be part of it. I mean, it's a paper, uh, you sign in, that's how it works, you know. Talk to the managers, do a meeting, bring the fighters, explain what your program is. Just don't send a letter asking fighters to join in without explaining them other than, oh, we think UFC is not is underpaying. That's that's how, that's what the letter said. Oh, I think uh, we think UFC is not uh, treating you properly, they're underpaying you, please sign here. I mean... That's weird to me. Fair enough. Now, last question for you, Stefan. I've been keeping you for quite some time here, which I appreciate uh, you doing this interview, of course. Um, you are the manager of Kevin Lee, Steve Bosse, and Jonathan Munay. Um, When can we see them all back in the octagon? Um, Kevin Lee uh, was a little bit injured uh, after his last fight. Actually, he was injured before the fight, but it got a little bit worse uh, and during the fight. It's not a major injury. It's nothing major. Uh, but he wanted to take some time to heal. Uh, he just went on a on, on a wedding uh, trip to uh, the Dominican Republic. Uh, he just got back Saturday uh, or Sunday, uh, so he's gonna start, he's gonna resume training now. So uh, I think Kevin will be back somewhere in November. Uh, Bosse uh, was pretty banged up from his last fight with uh, uh, O'Connell. So I think we'll see him back in December. And uh, I think Meunier will be somewhere around November or, or December as well. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to see uh, Jonathan, Steve, and, and Kevin back in action. And um, for Kevin, he, in my opinion, he's one fight away uh, from fighting a top 15. So we're, we're really excited about that. I mean, we, we, we talked to Joe Silva about guys we, we would like to fight, obviously, Kevin's been very vocal about wanting to uh, rematch Yaquinta or, or fight um, Sage Northcutt. Um, we would love any of those two fights. Uh, obviously, uh, Yaquinta is now fighting uh, Thiago Alves in, in November in New York, so I don't think this is going to happen now, but maybe Sage Northcutt or, 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 or whoever. I mean, the important thing for us with Kevin, uh, we want an opponent uh, that will be significant enough that if he beats him, and he will beat him, uh, it will kind of guarantee him a top 15 uh, opponent because, uh, you know, I think he's been very successful in the UFC. He's still fairly young, and uh, uh, I think uh, the time is now for him. I mean, he was very impressive in, the, in his last outing against a very tough uh, opponent, and he won the first round by stoppage. So I think, I think you know, he pretty much showed his true colors that night, and... Uh, I think uh, the time is uh, is right for him to to start climbing those uh, those those rankings now. 
Awesome. Well, Stefan, I really appreciate you taking the time today. So before I let you go, just let my listeners know where they can, where they can find you on social media, where they can find TKO on social media, anything else you got going on in the world of mixed martial arts, uh, any thank yous, the floor is yours, my man. Hey, I, I mean, I can't, I, I want to thank all the, all the people around me. I don't want to name names because I might forget some, uh, and, and the list is too long. We would be on the phone for another hour. I just want to thank everybody that's been supporting me, uh, my team, the fans, the fighters, uh, the Quebec Athletic Commission, obviously uh, UFC, UFC Fight Pass, um, everybody you know in the country that's been very supportive of the TKO return, and uh, all those uh, past supporters who are coming back, uh, that, that means the world to me. And uh, on social media, you can find us on our uh, group page, which is TKO MMA. We're also we have also the official TKO page on Facebook. It's TKO official, TKO MMA official. Sorry, uh, the official web page will be launched in the next couple of weeks. I think uh, maybe in ten days. It's going to be a very very amazing web page with a ranking system and everything. Uh, it's going to be TKO MMA.ca, and uh, obviously we're on Twitter. On, at TKO MMA official.